Yes, it's getting cold in Oregon now and I'm back to wearing jackets in my freezing cold office. Hey, in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you some of my favorite methods for working with highlights and photos using luminosity masks. As anyone who watches my videos knows, I've been using luminosity mask techniques in my image developing since 2006 when I first read Tony Kuiper's now legendary article about them on the Nature Photographers Network, also known as NPN. Luminosity masks are a Photoshop tool that can take a little while to learn, but can provide a level of control and the ability to make very refined adjustments that would be hard for me to accomplish otherwise. I'll also mention that this tutorial is just one of the chapters out of 50 chapters like it that make up the new course that I've been hard at work on called Luminosity Mask Masterclass, which comes out in November of this year, 2020. So depending on when you're seeing this, it'll either be coming out soon or it's already available. So let's go over to Photoshop and I'll show you some methods for working with image highlights, just one of many uses for these advanced masking techniques. The original and perhaps most common way to use luminosity masks is for making precisely controlled tonal adjustments. So in the next chapters, we're going to look at some ideas for using luminosity masks to work with highlights, shadows, and midtones. Let's start with highlights. The lights mass and the lighter zone mass are great for working with image highlights. For images that you want to just control the overall highlight tones, the really basic way to go is just to start with a basic lights one mask and you might even work with a different color channel just to see if there's one that better targets what you're going for. And you can also add a little contrast into that mask if you want. And now we'll just make an adjustment that adjusts the tone or the brightness of the image. Curves provides the most control and features, but levels, brightness, contrast, and even the exposure adjustment all have their own benefits. In this case, I'll just add it to a curves adjustment layer. And of course, we could just work directly with the curve, but when I'm darkening highlights in this way, one of my favorite things to do is try the multiply blending mode first. The multiply blending mode darkens the image, but it does it without changing anything on the curve. So after I've used the multiply blending mode to darken, I still have the curve, which I can use to further work with overall brightness and contrast. And so I can really dial in just the look I'm going for. So that's doing a great job of kind of reining in or softening those highlights. And if we were to make that exact same curves adjustment without that luminosity mask, that's what it would look like. So you can see how that mask is really controlling where that adjustment is going. Let's look at some other examples. Images like this that have a very misty or atmospheric look, if you just go immediately to darkening or adding contrast, you can lose some of that effect. But a luminosity mask can really help you preserve it. So again, we'll just go with a standard lights mask here and I will add it to a brightness contrast adjustment layer this time just for some variety. And again, I'm going to use the multiply blending mode to darken. And then I can also work with now the brightness and the overall contrast to really dial in the effect I'm going for. And as you can see, that's doing a great job of bringing down again, those kind of harsh highlights while maintaining that nice misty effect and not blocking up the shadows. Here's what that adjustment would look like without the mask controlling it. Let's look at another one here. I've got some bright coral on dark black rocks. I'd like to bring back some color and detail in that coral, which is a little overexposed, but I don't want to darken up the rocks. So let's see what a lights luminosity mask will do. That's a lights one going to a lights two in this case really isolates that coral. And I can even bring it up a little bit to make sure we're getting all of that worked with. And now I'll go to a curves adjustment. And for this one, maybe I'll just bring down the curve. I don't think I need to use the multiply blending mode on this. Just a little bit of darkening and contrast work. And I think that's doing an excellent job to bring some detail out of that coral while leaving the rest of it alone. Again, without the mask, that's what our image would look like, not what I'm going for. 
Let's go to this one. Ah, sometimes in a deep forest setting, you've exposed for the deep shadows and the water can really blow out, especially if you've got rapids or white water. So again, a light's luminosity mask can be great for controlling this. Let's try a couple of different color channels to see if we can really isolate the water. That blue channel really does a good job of that. And I'm also gonna bring over the blacks a little bit. I don't wanna lose my feathering, but I do wanna darken the blacks a little bit and maybe even bring up the whites a little bit. Again, just to keep things simple, we'll just go with the brightness contrast adjustment on this one. And again, the multiply blending mode to darken with that mask. And that immediately just creates a really nice look in the water. And then I can work with the overall brightness and contrast in the water to dial it in just how I want it. Let's see how that's looking. Yeah, that's really brought back some great color and detail in the rocks. And if I were to use that <laughs> same adjustment without the mask, it's pretty extreme. And this is where I might just do a little painting right on the mask, because I can see that right in this area, I actually want to bring through a little more of the adjustment and not have as much control by the mask. So I'm gonna bring my flow way down here and then just paint in a little bit in there and a little bit in there just to bring in a little more of the darker effect in those areas. Okay, I think that looks great. A few more examples here. Aha, this one has some snow and some sky, which was really blown out. Uh, it's actually not blown out. I, I don't think I overexposed it, but it's just looking washed out. So again, let's try and see what we can get here. Uh, again, maybe that blue channel will help protect the trees down here that I don't want to darken. Let's try that. Curves adjustment layer, multiply blending mode, and overall great adjustment. But here it's going into parts of the image that I don't want it to go into. I liked the exposure in the foreground. So this is a perfect use of masking the mask. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this to a group with a white mask and paint with a black brush. I'm gonna bring up my flow back up to around 20% again. And now I'm just going to paint that adjustment out of the foreground. But I don't have to be careful because the mask underneath is still controlling how the feathering and blending is gonna happen. And now I can just with the controlling mask up top, I can just bring that adjustment with the luminosity mask in just only right where I want it. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. And again, without the mask, just so we can see. Uh, whoops, let's get rid of this one too. Yeah, that's a really extreme adjustment using curves without the masks, but with the two masks, masking the mask, we get just a great adjustment. Okay, aha, this one is a little more complex, but let's check it out. Again, start with a lights mask to control the highlights. I think I'll go with a blue channel once again, and let's try adding a little bit of contrast with the auto levels and maybe even bring the whites up and the midtones down, something like that. I'll go with the curves, use the multiply blending mode, and yeah, it's doing a great job of bringing in some nice color and texture to that mountain, but it's not blocking up all of the landscape, which that adjustment would without the mask. But now I wanna do some adjusting to the highlights for color and brightness. So let's see if we can find a mask that will target those. Let's see, maybe the red channel and maybe a lights two, that looks good. And I'm gonna add this to a curves adjustment layer and use that to now in those highlights, create a little bit of contrast, but try to kind of bring them in a little bit. Let's see how that's looking. Yeah, I like it. And I'm also gonna come into the color channels here and add a little bit of red and a little bit of magenta and a little bit of yellow to just even enrich in those colors a little more, but it's also reaching into parts of the image more than I want it to, other parts of the image. 
So another great opportunity to use masking the mask. This time I'm going to add it to a group with a black mask and use a white brush to just paint it in right in the areas where I want it, which is just in these highlights and in the clouds, kind of like that. Okay. Excellent. So again, just out of curiosity, without that mask, well, actually let's go without that mask and without this mask, it's a pretty extreme adjustment. But with those masks, it's working out great. And here's this image from where it started to where we were able to take it with just a couple of quick adjustments. And finally, you can also use lights luminosity masks to bring up highlights that are in the shadows. Now we could use a lights selection to try to target the highlights. Even though these are in shadows, there are lighter parts of the shadows and I wanna give those lighter parts of the shadows a little brightness, but I don't wanna fully lighten up all of the darkest parts of the shadows. So this is where maybe even a slightly lighter than lights one mask with a little contrast will get us what we want. So that's one possibility, something like that. Or this might be a good time to try a zone mask and just select one of those tones that's down in there and see if we can get a mask that also selects that. And I'm not sure, let's see if we can find a zone somewhere in there. Yeah, that's getting those highlights a little better. Maybe bring up the whites, bring down the blacks. I really wanna protect what's down in the shadows. I'm not sure I'm happy with that zone. So this is part of the process, trying different things. I'm gonna go back to that lights, maybe uh, yellow or red. Nah, not quite sure, but here's one other thing we can try. Remember that we can take the inverse of a darks. So if I take a darks two and invert it, I get a lighter lights than the lights one would have been. And now I can add a little contrast into that. Yeah, let's go with this one. All right, so I'm just gonna add this to a brightness contrast adjustment layer. I'm gonna bring up the brightness and you can see I can really brighten up now those highlights and maintain some contrast in those highlights. Now, of course, it's having an effect in this outer part of the image that I don't want. So again, perfect time for masking the mask. I'm gonna put it in a group with a black mask, white brush, and now I can just paint in some of those highlight adjustments just where I want them. All right, let's see how that looks. Yeah, I think that's giving a nice little highlight boost in the shadows without losing the overall impact of the shadows themselves. So I find that probably the lights luminosity masks are the ones I use more than any others. And this is in no way exhaustive. That's just to give you some ideas, the possibilities for how you can use lights masks to work with highlights in these ways and many, many more goes on and on.